Yeah, once again, I want to welcome you to our This Week broadcast. I hope you've been, those of you who have been following, I hope you are blessed with what we've been bringing your way. And today, uh, we'll be looking at a very serious topic that uh, is quite common among us Christians, which uh, I have my colleagues here, Pastor Chris Guala of Spread the Word Ministry here in Johannesburg, South Africa. So he will be introducing to you what we are talking about today. What are we sharing today? Now, our topic today will be the carnal Christian versus the spiritual Christian. So we have to look into two perspectives of this discussion today. We can take two perspectives, in other ways, the carnal Christian mind and the spiritual, spiritual Christian. Christians. So what is the difference in between these two? In the first case, when we talk of carnal mind, what is carnal mind? Well, when we talk about uh, a carnal person, is a person who is characterized by carnality and um, who tries to live in the flesh. Uh, a Christian who suppose, supposedly is born again, but he has not allowed his life to be spiritually controlled, but he is carnally controlled. He is living like a person who is living in the flesh. So not living in the like a person living, in other words, it's someone who is literally dominated by the things of the flesh, yeah. by the desires of the flesh, yeah. by the desires of the mind which is of the flesh. It's, in other words, it's not balancing up with the things of the spirit mm. that he believes in, uh, as supposed to believe as a Christian. Uh, I think basically, in other words, if you, if, so we have to take our test from the book of uh, Romans chapter 8. Yes. I think we'll start reading from there. We'll read a few verses there, then we'll look into it and see uh, when Paul began to talk about the, the spiritual mind and the carnal and the kind of mind in the person, all that person. Mm -hmm. And if, if I may read here in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. spirit. That's true. For the law of the spirit of life is what in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of the sin and death. So first of all, in chapter 1, I mean verse 1, he talks about there's no condemnation for them which are in Christ. He established that straight on. Good. But now, the second line, they say, who walk not after the flesh. Mm. So in other words, it's possible for you to be in Christ and still tend to continue to walk in, in the flesh. flesh. Yeah, that's, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so he said, who walk not after the flesh? Now, you can be in Christ at the same time and still walk in, in the, the flesh. flesh. Okay, verse 3, go for it. So, for what the Lord could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Okay, verse 4. That the righteousness of the Lord might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Again, yeah. he's talking about who walk not. There is a distinction then. After the flesh, but after the things of the spirit. spirit. Walking in the flesh and walking in, in the spirit. spirit. Which one have you chosen? Exactly. You can so, choose to walk in the flesh or you choose to walk in the spirit. And so, in other words, being a Christian, actually, you can be in Christ and at the same time find yourself walking in the flesh. Yeah. That's exactly. basically what the scripture is establishing here. Yeah. That's excellent. Okay, fine. But Spirit said, for they that are after the flesh do mind what? The things of the, the, of the flesh. Of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, they mind the things of the, of the spirit. Okay, now we stop there. We'll yeah. come back to the next verse. He said, yeah. If we're, first of all, if this is address, addressing to Christians. Mm -hmm. That it's possible for a, a Christian to be born again, go to church, do everything, all the religious stuff that goes with it and all that, mm. but I still actually be mindful of the things of the flesh. Yes. So yes. things that fulfilled his fleshly desire. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when you are not spirit controlled, spirit controlled, and it means you are moving in the flesh. You are you have taken the negative side of life. As a Christian, instead of being uh, spirit controlled, it has to do with passion. What is your passion? What what is your interest? You know what is your appetite? Appetite, appetite. You know the things you love to do and uh, the things that bring pleasure to you. So uh, when we examine all this stuff, then you will know whether you are living spiritually 
or you are carnally minded Christian? To be carnally minded, your mind has to be filled with the things of the flesh. Of the flesh. What are the things of the flesh? Well, Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 20 tells us about you know, the things of the flesh. What are those things? Now, some of these things, if we should quickly turn to Galatians chapter number 5. Galatians 5 verse 19. 5.19. Here we come. Yes. He said, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelings. Now, such like of which I told you before. Now, when you see all these vices and you still have interest towards these vices, um, it shows that you are carnally minded. You are not spiritually, you know, minded. You are not spiritually sensitive. You are not alive in the spirit. To be alive in the spirit, um, we will consider its characteristics, okay. but for now, yeah. we're looking at the work of the very, flesh. The work of the yeah. flesh, yes. And if you look actually, what if you look at the same scripture where we were reading the mm -hmm. if you look at verse fourteen, they say in verse fourteen, I mean verse sixteen, they said, "This I say then, walk in the spirit, and what you will not fulfill the lust of, of the, the flesh. flesh. For the flesh lost against the spirit, spirit. and the spirit lost against the flesh, flesh, and these are contrary one to the other. Yeah. So that you, you cannot, cannot do this. the things that, that you would have loved to do. Amen. So there is striving here. Yeah, that is a strife. There's know, a striving between the, 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 the flesh yeah, and, and the spirit. spirit. Well, when you are not born again, you're a natural man. Okay. And then immediately you yeah. are born again. Yeah. That is this element of spirituality. The life of Christ comes to dwell in you. Like we read in that uh, Romans chapter 8, yes. verse 1. Yeah, but then if you do not allow the principles of Christ, the biblical principles, to moderate your life, which the scripture talks about, you, the things of righteousness, you go back to the old nature, the old nature, which is the you know, Adamic nature, some people call it, you know, uh, flesh, which, Adamic which nature. we read in that, uh, um, in Galatians chapter, chapter 5, five verse, 19. verse 19. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, so, when you are born again, there is a conflict now, the new life that has been imparted into you, and the old Adamic nature, some of them are in conflict. Yeah, Both of them are in, com in you know, sin nature. They are in conflict. This one wants to overtake this. The other one wants to overpower the other one. So there is a conflict in your life. It is within you to decide which one you're going to obey. If you obey the natural life of your former natural life, you become carnal. You become carnally minded. But if you obey the Spirit of God that is communicating to you, because spiritual. That's how it operates. So as Christians, we are constantly required to walk, to listen to the voice of the Spirit. Hmm. The Bible says the voice of the Spirit is that of righteousness. Yeah. By definition. Yeah, man. By, of course, of the flesh, we, we saw the manifestation of where we read in verse, chapter, I mean, verse 9, of what we just read, the works of the flesh. Yeah, chapter 5, verse 19. Verse 19. It talks about the, in fact, right before, before 19, there's so many things that the work of the flesh is manifest yeah. in this. You mentioned mm -hmm. adultery, yeah. fornication, greed, hatred, uh, all sorts of things. So these are things of the flesh. Mm -hmm. The things people desire mm -hmm. to do in the flesh. And the Bible says these were things that we were doing before yeah. we came to Christ. Exactly. Now, when we are in Christ, we continue with those things. Mm -hmm. In other words, we have automatically become, we are still very carnal in our thinking. Very carnal, yeah. We're very carnal in our decision making. Yeah. We're still very carnal. In other words, the flesh is still dominating mm -hmm. and ruling our lives. Mm. That's yeah. my understanding here. Yeah. 
Yeah, when you are born again and you yield to the negativities of life, and then the the the, the spirit of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, will want to dominate your life. Right. And then you will not work according to the Christian work. Mm -hmm. You will work contrary to the spiritual standard that is set for Christians. Yeah. So we are, that's why the Bible wants us to renew our mind yeah. constantly. We renew our mind with the word of God so that we walk the Christian work. In fact, the book of Samuel was saying that we should what? Guard our heart with all diligence. Diligence. For out of it are what? The issues. issues of life. So it comes out to one thing. And uh, remember Jesus was talking about the works of the flesh. Yeah. And where he says, what destroys a man is not what goes in, mm -hmm. but what comes out. Because we, we premeditate it from within. Good. Those are things of the of the flesh. Of the flesh. Which is quite interesting that the, 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 the he talks about the in that verse 19 where he refers to when he everything he talks about drunk and revealing. Mm -hmm. He said, and such like, of which I tell you before, mm -hmm. and I have also told you in time past that mm -hmm. they which do such things shall not inherit the, the kingdom, kingdom of, God. of God. But now, it's a situation, yeah, it, you look at it this way that. Mm -hmm. Come to think of it. Yeah. Here you are in the world. Mm. We do as we please. As yeah. the Bible put it. Natural. Okay. Mm. Now you now in Christ Jesus. Mm. There's a change that is suspected. Yeah. Because the Bible said we are no longer what we used to be. Yeah. We're not. If, if any man is in Christ, Christ so a new creation. New creation. We become so, a new creation. Yeah, we've been recreated. Yeah. In Christ Jesus. Yes. So what we are now supposed to expect of us mm. is that same Galatians. But now, taking from verse 22. 22, this, yeah. The fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit. The, spirit of, the fruit of the Spirit. Of the Spirit. Because yes. when you say you are a Christian, you do all the religious activity. You go to church on Sunday, you're in the choir, you sing and praise, you even go and witness on the streets and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But the way we just read earlier, mm -hmm. you see this manifestation in you. The Bible says your life is still in the flesh. Yeah. There's another... Look at, look at it before we get to the things of the Spirit. Okay. Have you noticed that, for instance, um, when you wake up in the morning, mm. all you think about is about your next meal, yeah. your next money, mm -hmm. your next wealth, mm -hmm. your next opportunity, mm -hmm. your next success, whatever that may be, yeah. academics, whatever it is. When your mind is surrounded by the things, natural things, natural things right. that God wants to do with the Spirit, mm. Can that be equated as work of the flesh as well? Yeah, it's a part of the work of, of, of the flesh, worldly things. But I'm not saying that we should not be ambitious. It's different from yeah, it's, when you... It, it, now ambition is different from when you are constantly preoccupied on by how to the make things of this world. Of this world. Yeah. The things of this you are world. Sorry, it's just about, I want to get rich. Yeah, how to want, make it. How yes. to make it. You, you have no time for God. You don't even have time to have your uh, prayer, quiet time, meditation with the Word of God. Uh, you don't visit other Christians. You don't read the Word of God. So, but you are so preoccupied by the things of this flesh. How am I going to get this? How can I get the best of this? Achieving that, um, achieving this, achieving your struggle everything. is to achieve this, achieve this, achieve mm -hmm. that. But that is not divine mandate. There should be a balance. A little to the left, a little to the right, so that you get a balance. Uh, that's what the Bible requires of us. But in a situation like whereby now we're, we're confronted with the issue now of uh, God wants us to have everything. That's the ministry now, the preach, preachers now everywhere. Uh, God has given us everything. Prosperity, we are, yeah, prosperity, yeah. Preachers. Abraham blessings ours. Mm. We are this, we are that, we are that. We are covenant of Abraham. We are not supposed to be poor. We are supposed to be this, we are supposed to be that, 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 that. that. Mm. On and on it goes. And that's for me, that gospel has mis misled a lot of many of people. Now, there is this covetousness, uh, there is this greediness, avariciousness, uh, the quest to possess all, to have all. But God wants us to be ambitious, uh, God wants us to have the best, but it does not contradict uh, the fact that we are to labor, we are to work that God blesses our handwork. Yes. 
when you work hard, God is going to give you other things. But a preacher comes to tell you, you need to pray. As you pray, you command, you possess, you get, and the rest of them. Right. And you become this, you don't work, and uh, you are so um, taken away so corrupt. by the material things of Side of You things, become yeah. materialistic. Right. That is a part of the flesh, it's a part of carnality. So, um, it simply puts the, the, like, I mean, we desire this, we desire that, but when they become our dominance, yes. Yes, preoccupation of our mind, mm. we no longer think of eternity, mm. the, 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 the life that is to come after death. Mm. All we are concerned about achieving this year on earth, achieving that year on earth, mm. I think that becomes where the problem and that's where a lot of Christians have been caught mm. in the trap of carnality yeah. without even knowing mm. that we've been come so carnally mm. minded. Like mm. Jesus said, he said, hey, you don't need to worry about tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow is far away to, to, to deal with his own problem. Mm -hmm. Yesterday is forever gone. Today is where you are. Don't even bother about today because if your father would feed the bears in the field, mm. how much more you? Are you not more? Impressions than them. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it has to come to that level whereby our mind is totally first of all, we wake up in the morning, it's about heavenly. Mm -hmm. It's about eternity. Mm -hmm. Before our earthly desires. Yes. Because the Bible says if we put God first in our life, mm -hmm. He will exalt us before men. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. So for me, I think we need to understand one thing that uh, to be carnally minded. The Bible said this word is death. Enemity. Enemity. With God. That's With God. That's God. That's right. That's right. Because if you read that same chapter, we we'll stop at verse 6. If you go to verse 6, it says, For to be carnally minded is death. Mm. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And peace. You see the difference there? Yeah. To be carnally minded is death. In other words, all these desires, all these things that takes your mind away from yeah. fellowshipping with God, from being with God, mm. the Bible says it brings death. Yeah. Because you literally, you alienate yourself mm. from Him. You are caught up from Him because everything, you don't desire Him. You desire things to fulfill your desire, desire. your kind of mind. Mm. It, 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 that's why when we're reading that, uh, Galatians is talking about the things of the flesh. The flesh. Fornication, adultery, wealth, these, all sorts of things mm. that have to do with the things we crave for daily. Well, Yes. And he said that if our mind is always about that, mm. then we are actually pursuing death. Yeah. You see, this death we are talking, first of right. all, is spiritual death. Spiritual death, yes. Not the spiritual death. death. Yeah. Spiritual death, yes. Yeah. Because but to yeah. be spiritually minded is life. Life, yes. Because life and peace. And peace, yes. Because spiritual death, for instance, takes your mind away from God. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Then you become, it's, it's about you, mm -hmm. about your need, mm -hmm. it's about how your bill is going to be paid, how your children are going to have the best of school, how are you going to do that? But spiritual mind, it talks about what? Of what? Life and what? And, and, and peace. And life and peace. Yes. Okay. Spiritual okay. mind, to be spiritual mind, is a life and peace. And remember in our Christianity, what are we pursuing? We're pursuing life. life. Not just life yet. We're talking of life eternal. eternal. Because life actually begins when we close our eyes, we appear on the other side mm -hmm. of heaven. Mm -hmm. That's where life begins. Because that's where eternity begins. That's is. where eternal life begins. Exactly. Which is yeah. eternity. But life begins when we yield to Christ. To Christ exactly. We have life, the life of Christ in us. In us. The Zoe kind of life, the God's kind of life. But then the eternal life, when we close our eyes and we're in the other world, we face eternity. Absolutely. Uh, but look at verse 7. Yeah. Romans chapter 8, verse 7 say, Because the carnal mind, uh, because the carnal mind it's is a, enmity yeah. against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So when we are carnally minded, we are setting ourselves as enemy of God. Oh, that's true. We don't even enemy know with God. We don't even know it sometimes. We don't, yeah, people don't know this. Yeah, when we are carnally minded, carnal ambition, carnal thinking, negative thinking, and the rest of them, pleasures, and the rest of them. When this is our life, so we are carnal Christians. And the carnally minded Christian does not please God. God. That's exactly what it says. It says yeah. an enemy. When you're an, an enemy, enemy of God, at least though you're an enemy of man, you become an enemy. Mm -hmm. And I like the way you put it there in that uh, Galatians chapter uh, 5, verse 9, mm -hmm. I mean 19. 19. Yeah. Where you, 
where we read earlier, if you talk about it, if you look at the things of the flesh when it was mentioned, it didn't just talk about fornication and adultery. Mm -hmm. It talks about hatred there. Yeah. It talks about jealousy. It talks about gossip. It right. talks about these basic it things. It talks about wrath. Yeah. Strife. That's right. All these basic things. There is this envy, murder, yes. drunkenness. This we, we practice, drunkenness. we think <laughs> these are minor sins. Yeah. These are just minor things. It doesn't matter. You go about rattling about other people, mm -hmm. talking about other people, mm -hmm. gossiping them and everything. Yeah. All those basic things people think, oh, yeah. you can just get it after all. Yeah. The Bible says these are things that, that manifest as the things of the flesh. Uh -huh. Things of the flesh. So, and when you practice these things, the Bible says we are walking what in carnality. Mm -hmm. There's no other shortcut to it. Yeah, in, in the book of Corinth, um, somewhere, Paul was castigating the Corinthian Christians because some of them uh, were prioritizing Christianity in a, a different kind. Yeah. This one say, I am of Christ. And this one say, I'm of uh, Apollos. This one say, I'm of uh, Peter and the rest of them. Right. Now, uh, Paul told them, uh, the Bible said, are you not carnally minded? You Christ this, yeah. died for you. Paul did not die for you. Right. Paul may plant, Apollos may water, but the man that gives increase it's is right. the one that counts so much. Yes. So the possibility of force, you know, Running into carnality, yeah, you know, it's not too far away. That's true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Because and if you look at that verse eight where we are reading, it mm -hmm. said, "So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God." Yeah, I think that's why sometimes you look at people, for instance, they think uh, pleasing God is about the flesh. The more tight they give, the thing the more. No. So the more they shout and sing all that, Hallelujah, Hosanna mm -hmm. in the choir, mm -hmm. they think that's God is hearing their voice. But deep down, God knows our heart. Mm. He knows how close we are to Him. Mm. Whether we're walking in the flesh or we're walking, walking in the spirit. I might not see you, you might not mm. see me, mm. what we do, but it is obvious there that no, we're not just are you an enemy with God. Of course, when you're an enemy of, with someone, you cannot walk with mm. them. That's why it's complaining that verse 8 mm. that so then they that are in the flesh cannot walk with cannot please God. Yeah, cannot please God. Yeah, cannot. No matter what you do, yeah. because it doesn't take interest mm. in what you do for Him. Mm. Do you understand? That's why you see in the Old Testament when you're talking about sacrifice, mm. sacrifice was always about cleansing of sin. Yeah. And you cannot uh, come and start uh, uh, wanting to please God with your sacrifice when you have not repented. Yeah. So that's why he didn't have desires in some of those sacrifices they come, they bring to him at that time because they bring the sacrifices but their heart was not there. Yeah. God, God yeah. is great. God is sovereign. We cannot bribe God. Okay, that's absolutely it's not about how fat your mm -hmm. tithe is. Right. In as much as I believe that tithe is also of a necessity yeah. if we have the grace. Mm -hmm. But it's not about how much you gave in the church yeah. you know, that will make you to please God and the rest of them. Right. Yeah. So you have to uh, give in to the Spirit and allow the Spirit of God co to control you. That's why we talk about spirit-controlled life. life. And of course, Ephesians talks about the spirit-controlled life. We're also reading Galatians yeah. chapter 9, yeah. verse 22. Verse 22, yeah. The fruit yeah. of the spirit. Yeah, when you are living in the spirit, yeah. the manifestation will be so clearly, you know, seen here. Yeah. Because so it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Love. Yeah. Joy. Joy. Again, peace. peace again. Long suffering. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. You see, people today are so much concerned about charismatic power. Right. You know, to prophesy, I'm a prophet. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I want I have faith. I want to do miracles, working of miracles, and the rest of them. But they have neglected the fruit of the Spirit. The spirit yeah. The fruit of the Spirit. Right. You know, um, they emphasize the gift of the Spirit to the detriment of the fruit of the Spirit. To have a balance, the fruit of the Spirit must be seen in your Christian life, in your Christian work. <laughs> <Does> <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean, uh, we are reading this now, looking at it. There's yeah. some, some words here that's no longer mentioned. You know, mm -hmm. in the body of Christ, you can no longer hear the word long suffering. Long suffering. Mm. 
There's, there's, those are things you don't hear these days. Mm-hmm. The, oh, oh, what is long suffering? I mean, why would God want you to suffer? Yeah. You are the child of Abraham. Mm-hmm. God gave you everything. Yeah. So when things are not working out for you, it cannot even be interpreted mm-hmm. as long suffering. Rather, it's going to be interpreted that probably God is judging you for what you have done wrong or something like that. Right. But forgetting that the Bible says that part of our fruit of righteousness mm-hmm. here, or fruit of the Spirit is long suffering. It talks about gentleness. It talks about goodness. Then it talks about faith. Yeah. Coming together, then it talks about meekness, it talks about temperance, which a lot of us Christians cannot even don't know what is temperance anymore. Yeah, <laughs> it's like things of the past. These are Christian virtues, yes, that, virtues should be that should be seen in our life, and our daily work with God. If these virtues are not seen in our life, life, Christian life does not appeal to outsiders, to the unbelievers, to those who are not born again. No wonder we've become so noisy about them. They yeah. yeah, will you say that the, the, the actually the body of Christ has become more of less of a noise, more than the the real thing, the real deal people are looking for? Yeah, the the issue here is charismatic charismatics. You know, uh, the power gift, the power gift, uh, charismatic abilities. Uh, I'm a prophet. I am this. I am that. I can see. I'm a seer. I'm this. So people take it, we become so noisy about this, thing. but the virtue, the Christian virtue, the fruit of the Spirit, the Spirit does not control our life any longer. And some of these things, they actually share most of this you have mentioned about now, mm-hmm. is centered on these same people who deliver social. It's no longer about God, it's about them. Mm-hmm.